Okay, so now that we've went through um, how to do the Express setup and we've went through how to default it in case you've lost your password, what we want to do is kind of go through, um, basically pick up where we left off and uh, just kind of show that now I am actually, uh, I've rebooted the switch and I'm connected to what I set it at as uh, uh, 192.168.0.100. Um, and so you can see that the switch is actually set up and I'm not set up through the express anymore. So I'm not on port one. I'm actually on the uh, giga port. So um, then to, to describe the giga ports um, on switches that you get from Generally, uh, the Stratic switches, they have two gigaports. Some, some of them have four. Depends on how you order them. Um, some could be, you know, have more than that. Um, so the limitations is really on, on the uh, part number you have and, and what you have. So in this one, you know, I have two gigaports. And uh, <clears throat> I'm able to, to set those up either via uh, the copper, which is RJ45, or through, um, you know, fiber. So in, in my case, I don't have fiber. I have copper. So it's a, it's an RJ45 connection. <clears throat> so real quick, the um, when you come in, you'll be under the dashboard. You'll see that um, it's still the same name we had, the Stratix 8000. Um, that's what we, we named the host name. Um, it shows the MAC address that we have. Um, it shows the uh, IP address. Uh, and of course, this is a... The, six, the case that I have is a uh, a six port managed switch, so uh, it gives you kind of some data on it. You know the temperature, um, you know stuff of that nature. In configuration, um, kind of go over a couple things real quick. <clears throat> you have a, a spot that you can configure the switch. You have a spot that you can go monitor the switch. So in this instance, um, you can look at port statuses. Um, you know, you can see that I'm hooked to the gigaport, um, and the speed is at a gig, and it's duplex of full. So um, that's just the status currently. You can run a diagnostic test if you need to to make sure the switch is in good health. Um, I will say, you know, I mean, it depends. I mean, there's, there's a reason to to do that, and there's reasons not to do it. So um, the firmware. You know, if you decide to upgrade to firmware, I would definitely research that a little bit more. Um, I'm not actually, so I'm not going to make a video on that right now, but if you would like to see one, I can do that. Um, but you can update the firmware, and it also shows you what firmware you're currently at. Um, so to go through that, now to get to the nuts and bolts, I know everybody wants to know about how to configure things. <clears throat> so you have two options. You have the smart ports, right? Which you can basically, and and all, no matter what switch you're using, they're all going to have this ability. Um, and what I mean by that is they'll all have the smart port ability. They'll all be somewhat the the graphical, you know, uh, screen you're going to have right here is going to be different. So <clears throat> in my case, it shows me my switch layout, right? <clears throat> so I basically hover over it. I can tell what VLAN it's on. I can tell. You know what what port it's on <clears throat> excuse me um so i can basically see you know what's going on with that <clears throat> and in the second instance i can see what my giga ports are doing and i'm hooked to one of them so <clears throat> well uh what you can do right here is you can select the role so what i mean by that is you can actually come right here <clears throat> and see if it's going to be an automatic uh, automation device. If it's going to be a desktop device, it's going to be a um, desktop to automation. It's going to be switched to automation. Um, you know, you can hook just about <clears throat> anything you want to it. <clears throat> if you wanted to do do wireless, you could. So in our case, let's just say we're going to be an automation automation device. Then I can come in here and select that on port one, port two, three, and four, and Let's say, for instance, I wanted to be uh, desktop to automation. Then I can put that as my gigaport. Now, if I wanted my my gigaport to talk to another switch, I could come in here and, and select it as switch for automation. So you can also customize things. Um, <clears throat> you know, as far as that goes, there's a customized screen. You know, we we've, we've already set it. So let's go ahead and and 
just submit that. So as we submit it, <clears throat> it submits everything. You can change the roles anytime you want to. Um, that's the smart port setup. So basically you're saying that whatever is connected to the device is going to be um, what you set it as. <clears throat> automation device, uh, maybe a switch to automation, you know, um, a router to automation. It, it could be anything of that nature. Just know that any switch that you have will have this selection in there. So you, it could be a 5700 or a 5400. In this case, it's a, uh, <clears throat> it's an 8000. So only have, uh, only have, what, uh, six ports. So port settings. <clears throat> Real quick, you can go into port settings. You can set the speeds to them. You know, a um, hundred full, you'll notice that your, what it has over here is going to be your port. And in the type switch I have, I have uh, the port speed that I'm able to go to is a hundred full, which is as fast as you can go on th that particular port. I can also set it, like if I'm talking to a legacy device, like say a PLC5 or something that does not have the ability to go to. Um, a port speed of 100 full, <clears throat> then I want it, like that legacy device, I want to set to 100 half. Um, in most cases, you're going to be 100 full, unless you're talking to something that, that old. The Gigaport, which is the G, G port right here. Sorry, it highlighted more. <clears throat> it's going to be auto. And in this case, it's going to basically say, um, you know, it's, it's going to connect and, and be what it is obviously it's a gigaport right so it can it can actually do 10 of the 100 half or 100 fulls so um real quick that's how to set up the ports um the express setup so no we don't want to save that actually let's let's do that let's come in here and let's set them all to 100 full let's come in here and set them all to 100 full so Auto auto is something that you can do. Uh, most most switches are going to be auto auto. I like to use hundred full and force everything to hundred full to its fastest capability. That's just what I do. Um, not not necessarily a best practice of any nature. Um, Rockwell will tell you to set it to auto auto for conductivity. So uh, they're more worried about conductivity than they are speed and uh, limitations. So real quick again. The express setup, that's what we set up in that first video. Uh, again, that name, uh, the IP address of the switch right now, um, the password, subnet, and all that nature. The VLANs are obviously the VLANs that we set as well. So, as far as that goes, um, you know, you can set your VLANs whatever you want. Uh, again, a VLAN is a virtual LAN, so you can set and segment this switch as much as you want. We have six switches or six ports on this. You can have each one as a VLAN if you wanted to. Again, that gets a little bit more complex, and I would say that you probably wouldn't have conductivity between the ports unless you routed it a certain way, which you could, but it's a little bit more tricky than uh, what I'm going to show on this video. So. <clears throat> You generally want to have, like you say, two ports or this or two ports or that or four ports or this or four ports or that. Um, you got to have connectivity. So if you're on VLAN, if whatever VLAN you're on, say you set one is VLAN one, VLAN two, then like say ports one, two, three are VLAN one and one, two, three, four are VLAN two because we have two ones and two twos. Um, you could do that. So just know that you have a capability of setting up different VLANs. Um, <clears throat> basically, some of this is, is going through um, you know, setting up different user groups and stuff of that nature. Uh, let's just skip down to IP address because I don't want to you know, jump into too much of this. So the VLAN that I currently have made is VLAN 1. It's routed to, again, this um, IP address. So... <clears throat> If I wanted to, so say for instance, I no. in the last video I showed you how to 
default the switch if you did not have the password. So if you could not get to this point right here um, and be able to configure it, you didn't know the password or you didn't know anything else, you could actually default it the way to out of box, like the way that uh, Rockwell recommends. So um, the second way is if you have this the switch and have the information you're signed in and you're on this page, you can merely just switch to out of box default and then restart the switch. Do also know that anytime you reset and uh, you restart switch, I should say, then it takes about five, ten, five to five minutes or three to five minutes to uh, reboot. So just a quick uh, overview of that. Um, you can look at the topology right now. Um, again, there's, yeah. Okay, so I don't have it laid out. So I don't, and like I said, I just basically a, a quick setup. So, um, as far as IP addresses, um, you come in, let's see, ports. You can put a description of the ports you want, um, whatever the case may be, um, you know, and I have it set up of that nature. Um, so, as far as that goes, really the, the quickest and, and best way to do it to get things up and running um, is to set it up with the express port. Um, you know, it really, I don't know. It's up to you how you want to set, set the switches up. Just know that this is a Stratix 8000. So the 8000 that I currently am showing right now is a very low, um, I won't say low end model. I will say limited model. So there are switches that have up to, you know, 20 ports that you can get like a um some of the 5700s and some of the 5400s that are a lot better um as far as being able to set up like uh multiple vlans uh, basically set it up and and segment it differently um the look graphical look right here will be slightly different they'll lay it out somewhat like uh like port status almost um, you know, as far as like laying out your ports and you select the port and you, wherever you want to go. Um, so of that nature, um, the DHCP, you can, um, basically set up, you know, create a pooling and stuff of that nature if you wanted to. Um, I will, would say this, um, a lot of times that, you know, people do the, um, the snooping and stuff of that nature um, that's set up uh, a certain way um, again I don't want to get too far into that um, you can put the uh, P2P as far as that goes uh, you can enable it um, end to end transition or transparent um, forward boundary I mean there's there's a lot of options here that you can kind of dig into and I suggest if you have one of these you read the manual on it um, before you just go trying something because you do not want to create a loop into your system um, I'm not showing how to set up a DLR or anything of that nature the switch I have currently I'm not sure that I even can set up a DLR um, I don't I don't think on this switch you can um, on the other switch so another thing to highlight too is this uh, my graphical user right here shows the actual status of it you can change the um you know the viewpoint of it um like ports so you can see the port speed on it um you can see the smart ports what they're currently set as uh if you wanted to change something you know of that nature so uh you can kind of see what they are um, and at all points, you can kind of hover over them and tell. Um, as far as that goes, now I will say this too. This is another thing on the port settings. On the Gigaport, say for instance, you're hooking this up to um, a fiber network. On the Gigaport, then you can change right here, media type. 
Um, again, we are RJ45, so we are copper. Um, in your case that you're going to be uh, using fiber, then you set that up as, you know, the SFP. So in our case, we are RJ45. I uh, want to basically submit that because um, we're not there's if you looked at the switch you have this is the switch layout this is the uh, the fiber would be to the right and the copper is to the left so uh, you probably know that um, already but just want to kind of highlight that you know as far as and this would be the whole switch the way it looks um, but just to kind of to highlight that you know just to kind of talk real quick uh, in reference to that so as far as that goes now we can go back to our dashboard um, again it's the same scenario that we have we can start connecting devices um, you know basically uh, and start seeing stuff of that nature so you can do you can also come in here and look at ports uh, statistics and uh, see what exactly you're hooked to see how fast how many packets you're missing or, or whatever the case may be so this is very uh, diverse as far as finding um, uh, finding information on it. Um, let's see. Let's just clear this one. So you know you can clear it and come back and look at the packets and see what's coming through it. Um, main thing is smart ports, um, port settings, IP addresses. Uh, stuff of that nature just um, and we'll come back and what we'll do is we'll I have a, a couple more devices we'll hook to it and just show you how it talks and show you you know what what is connected to so again um, not to to get too far into um, you know anything else and hopefully this was a uh, kind of value added uh, I know this is um, you probably don't have an 8000 switch just know that this is the same principle on whatever switch you have um, and there are some other features that that are not shown on this switch that are, are shown on the 5400s and the 57s. So um, just know that, and you know, like I said, they're not complex or anything like that. Um, it's the same basic uh, setup. You know, smart ports you can set up unless you're going to a DLR, um, and maybe I can I can make some videos on that. Um, it, it's not too much, uh, or it's not too complicated as far as that goes. Um, you're basically setting IP addresses and, and you know, changing, uh, going into NATs and stuff of that nature where you're changing translation tables. So your network translation table and stuff of that nature. So we're not going to get too far into that um, on the switch we currently have. Or, so. Um, so at that point, we'll just kind of wrap this video up and carry over to the next video where I'll just hook up some couple devices and uh, you can see that. So hopefully that was kind of helpful and, you know, as far as how to set up ports and and the this, this short configuration and, and just kind of double checking everything and, and knowing that what we set up earlier is uh, what we're talking through now. Okay, so uh, I'll wrap this one up. All right, thank you.